Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just picked up this 1980 Pontiac Trans Am Turbo. This car has been sitting for the last 20 years. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can get it running and driving today. and dumped it here last week uh, we couldn't work on it where it was sitting unfortunately but let's go ahead and take a look around this thing and see what we got going on starting the outside uh, apparently previous owner said back in the 80s they slid into a snowbank and that's what happened to there and why that door is a different color I don't know if that answers why the mirrors are missing but that's fine uh, not too bad on rust up here. This fender, you know what? This one's actually surprisingly nice. There's a little bit of a bubble there. Nothing too bad. That whole rocker and bottom of the door is good. Uh, we're not looking too good back here. That looks crunchy. We'll just go ahead and leave that on. That'll that'll hide everything for us. We got one tire down. Surprisingly, the other three tires are all holding air. Uh, that's for aerodynamics. See, the wind goes in there and it helps hold you down. The back plate's still there, so not that bad. A little bit crumbly. Surprisingly, right here where they always rot through, still in one piece. A little bit looks like it's starting around the T-tops. Head over to the other side. That's been replaced on at some point. Sounds like it's mostly made out of Bondo. Air in the tire. This door is getting a little rough. It looks like we're more solid back here, although that's not a straight line. I'm going to bet that's all Bondo right there. Yeah, door's definitely seen better days. The rocker is in really good shape. And then we have a bad fender. That's fine. Pretty good in the front. This car is all original paint except for that door over there, which is in really good condition for 43 year old paint. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the keys for this thing and get the trunk open so we can take a look in there and then work our way forward. I have not opened the hood on this car yet, so hopefully everything's there. Uh, previous owner says we have about 50% of the interior inside this car. Not installed, but you know, 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. All right, let's start back here. We got the CB radio antenna. There's a fuel cap on it. Please tell me this isn't the wrong key. Yep, there we go. Alright. Got a slapper bar. It looks like it's set in the mud. That's a lot. There's our air cleaner. There's a filter in a box. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's new anymore. We can use it though. At least we don't need to buy one of those. Let's get some squirrel nests out of here. I don't know what that thing is. We got a, uh, that's a factory air pump. We got that removed. Some cruise control. Oh man. No AC. How am I supposed to live without AC? Feels like a good compressor too. 
What's going on with all this foam in here? What is that? Got a brand new oil filter. Too bad I forgot to bring oil. Trunk floor is in really good shape. Looks like we got some ducting from the interior. We got some spare tire stuff. Oh, there we go. We got the motor oil. We're good to go. That is a PCV line. Looks like someone didn't want that on there. That's it. This just looks like the squirrels had a heyday. No spare tire. We don't need that. I don't know what that is. Looks like something for coolant. Been deleted. Bracketry. Not too much bad stuff. I don't know what that is. Probably something for the spare tire again. Let's just go ahead and throw all that back in there. Except for the air cleaner. We're going to hold on to that. Might be able to use on that. All right, next. Now let's do the interior. Looks like there's been some squirrels in there. Surprisingly, not too bad. Probably because of the lack of carpet and all the holes in the floor letting it vent out. Oh, we got steering wheel, a harsh fixture. Let me get you in here, you can see too. So, uh, squirrels left some uh, their lunch behind back here. Some breather holes in the floor over there. What do we? Kind of music we listen to. I think this is a uh, burn disc. All right. Doing some uh, CB radio action. That sounds like fun. Aftermarket radio. Getting fancy. Look at that. We got the uh, Hurst shifter with no ball on the end, as always, and a uh, BNM plate at the bottom. Makes sense. You know, we gotta cover that up nicely. Electric windows, so those will those will never work. Pretty nice steering wheel, actually. Uh, the mileage is yes. Judging by that pedal, though, it's probably over a hundred thousand. Amazing wiring work. No passenger seat. We have a back back of the back seat. That's perfect. That looks like the bottom or the back of the passenger seat. Oh, we got a gauge. This is a vacuum. This is a turbo car. Why do you need vacuum? Where's the boost gauge? These are the plastic sidings for back there. What is that? You got a you got a five liter shaker hood, even though this isn't a shaker car. That's fancy. We have some sort of gauges back here. Not to this car. Don't know what those are off of. We've got a 1970 through 81. V8 repair manual. I'll definitely need that. That'll help me out. Some sort of bushing. Somebody was going to take care of this thing. There's another bushing. Rear view mirror. Do we not have one of those? We do have one of those. But why are there just parts, more bushings? Um, oh, I must have forgot this in here. Petra, sunglasses, ready for vacation, one of those police detector thingamajiggers, really getting somewhere, oh, that's coming with me, brand new detail brush set, anything under this seat, uh, we've got one of those sweet gas pedal 
covers. Somebody smoked some marbles. Uh, that, where did that, that is not from this car, I don't believe. There's the factory shift cover. Oh, more stuff to go home with me. Anything else? Anything else hiding over there? There's the other, other bit of that pedal. Perfect. What's over here? Let's get over here. We got, there's a, there's a couple of these. Why are there so many of these? All right. Oh, we've got the, uh, well, the used to be chrome cover for the intake. That probably goes with the one that's in the trunk. Actually, no, the one that's in the trunk had one. That dude just wanted to be fancy. Factory steering wheel. That won't fit anymore. Uh, box that rocks that squirrels decide to live in. Old floor patch panel. There is so much stuff in here. There's a hose. What? What? This goes on a hose. Sprays something. Oh, it says soap fill right there. You fill it with soap. Wash your cars. We got a gauge. 33,000. So. This is probably a 133,000 mile car. I don't know what this is. There's no information filled out on it. We got the tack. This thing redlined at 5,000, I guess. I guess we have overheating issues. Oh, there's our oil pisses and temperature. And our squirrel nest. Oh, and we got some brand new Bondo blades. Oh my gosh. More cigarettes, some putty knives. Is that a registration? Oh. What do you say? Valid until, oh, it started valid in 42005 which is a little bit different than the inspection sticker. So that means this is 05, let's see, yeah, 05, March of 05, expired in September. So we can assume maybe somewhere between March and September. So that would be 18 years this car has been sitting. Wow. And somebody, Really wanted to, uh, is that a test light? Ha, huh. that's another score and it's intact. This car's just getting way better. Got so many free parts in it. Let's see if we can peek underneath the car. With all this grass, it might be hard. Well, I can tell this is the side that the uh, slapper bar is not on. The one that we found in the trunk. Oh, we've got some fresh coilover shock suspension in the rear, along with the leaf springs. This is a race car. And there's the other slapper bar on this side. We've got a little bit, if you can see that. Kind of hard to get you in there. A little bit of rust right there. Got that coil over there, along with the leaf springs. I also noticed we have an exhaust coming out this side, but nothing, nothing coming out over here, which means these are dull exhaust, which means this pipe is broken off somewhere. Let's hope it's after the muffler so this thing isn't screaming loud. Anything new in there? Nope. This is a drag car. They only needed to do work to the rear. Looked like someone tried to make it a drag car, at least with the slapper bars and the coilovers. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but that uh, sway bar back there is, has new bushings in it and it's all cleaned up. And whatever that cross member there is, 
has a little rust in it. That's a good sign. That tank sounds completely empty. And I don't hear any rust banging around under inside of it. We might have a good tank in this thing. That'd be surprising. Either that or it leaks, you know, that's normal. No mirrors. You don't need those. Uh, both the doors open and they shut all right. That's good. T-tops, do you come out? They do. And the seals aren't destroyed, besides right there. And the ants living in it. That's a bit of a pain right there. Okay, let's finally get under the hood of this thing. We've got the good old classic reach underneath me and steal what's under my hood, which normally they're harder to open, probably because it wasn't fully latched. Okay, well our air cleaner is definitely still missing. That's fine. Turbo's on there. We've got an aftermarket distributor on here. Oh, wait. This is a Jasper remanufactured motor. That's good. We've got an Excel High Super Coil. That'll be good to go. Probably not. We've got decent wires in here. They don't look like they've been all chewed up, besides the one that's just about to be melting against the exhaust downpipe. Looks like we're probably going to have some vacuum related issues. We've got some things plugged off here, some things missing. There's a coolant temp sensor snapped off. All right, so you know, we got the never start battery in here, so that's perfect. There's another Jasper factory engine exchange stickers, so it's got a newer engine in it. It doesn't have a date on it, so I don't know when they put it in. But that's good. That's a better chance of it starting for us. Uh, there's that coolant sensor that's broken off, broken vacuum lines, plugged off. Our Akacel, as I think Derek from Vice Group Garage likes to call it. Shitting back there, all plugged in, hopefully good to go. There's where our AC compressor that's in the trunk used to go. That's fine. What do we got in here? Well, I don't know if you can see it, but that's like 75% filled with coolant. Good to go on my part. I bought some coolant just in case. All right, I don't know where the oil dipstick is. Transmission, how are you looking? That's, I don't need to look at that again. It's got fluid on it, good for me. Doing a little bit of peeking around down here. I noticed this is where our PCV line used to go. I don't know, probably went into the air cleaner, I would guess. And back here, we've got a few, kind of hard to see. There's two vacuum ports back here that are in rough shape. That line's in rough shape too, but I think it'll hold. And we have a coolant line back here. See that hose and that pipe? Those are supposed to be together. And that pipe rusted off, so I'm going to go ahead and get this hose clamp off. Cut this pipe down a little shorter and get that put back in. Okay, we got those vacuum lines and that coolant line fixed up. So we're going to go ahead and do what I probably should have done first, which is make sure this engine spins. Alright, let's see if we can get this thing to rotate at all. I should be able to reach from here without slicing my hand up on the fan. Spins. I hear some compression. 
See if we can get full rotation out of it. Feels good. Real tight compression. It's a little bit stiff, but not too bad for how long it's been sitting. All right, that's good in my book. Next on the list, let's go ahead and yank a spark plug and see what that looks like if we need to pull the rest of them or if we think we're good trying to crank on it and give it some fuel. All right, all the plugs are out. They're all very foul. I mean, they're all just black, so she's been running a little bit rich. So we're gonna go ahead and clean them up with some cleaner and a rag and then put them all back in so we can hear this thing bark off. All right, our spark plugs are all cleaned and put back in. Surprisingly on this engine, it's really easy to get to all the spark plugs. You think it'd be more difficult because of all the exhaust piping and how tight it is, but super simple. Everything was really easy to get to. Our next problem, I did bring a battery but I brought a top post battery, not thinking. But I also brought jumper cables, so we're gonna see if we can hook onto this with some jumper cables and get enough current to actually get this thing spinning and maybe get it to bark off. For all we know, maybe this battery will take a charge and actually be happy. I doubt it, but let's just uh, cross them fingers. All right, we got the good old Dodge over here, jumping the battery and Got our water bottle full of fuel here. I'm gonna set the camera up and actually first things first. Hopefully that's not too loud and annoying. Let's see if this thing wants to spin over. Oh wow, that actually spins really good. I thought it was gonna be a little bit less because of the truck. Wow, okay. I think this thing's gonna run. Let's set the camera up. Just give it a little down the yap, and I'm going to try to fill the bowl up because I'll need to be inside this thing to start it. So, hopefully, it'll want to run and idle for a second with the bowl being full. All right, let's see if it's going to run. certainly wants to run. If I put the throttle a little bit inside, it'll fire up. I wonder if it just needs a little bit more to drink. Let me get it to fire and run for a second. That's a lot of fuel.
didn't even make a single noise. Let me go ahead and top off our coolant. And then I wonder if I should try the gas tank first since it seems solid and see if our fuel pump wants to work. Go ahead and fill this up. Oh, I missed a ton. Normally, if a car is sat for this long, you don't really want to trust the gas tank. But I don't really remember the last time I played by the rolls, so I'm going to go ahead and give this gas tank a shot. Go ahead and pop this fuel line off if we can. Maybe try this one. Let's try this one. This one seems more likely. Yeah. Free from free. There we go. See if that shoots any fuel out. Let me know if you see anything. I'm just gonna give that a little something to bark off at. Run a little clicky clacky just in case. get it running again and I we're gonna get to see if this thing's gonna idle on its own or not so far this thing for 18 years is being real nice to me all right let's try it again This thing's just been sitting here idling away for like five minutes now. Just been letting it run, clean itself out. See the coolant's starting to come up, which means it's probably about to open the thermostat. I'm gonna keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't overheat. It's just purring away. Barely even smoking. I did notice, I got to looking under here and the, Oh, exhaust is broken off 
right behind the muffler on this side, right above the axle. So at least it's past the muffler, it won't be too loud and it's just shooting right over the frame rail. But it's just sitting here idling. That's fantastic. Looks like our thermostat opened up. That's good news. Go ahead and put a little bit more coolant in her. If I can figure out how to aim. That's amazing. The thing just wanted to run. I still haven't checked if we have brakes or if the transmission's gonna do anything. Uh, does have, I noticed it's a ratchet shifter. I didn't even notice that when I was looking at it. I thought it was just a Hearst brand, but it's actually a Hearst ratcheting shifter. So that's interesting. Put this all back on top of it. Make it look fancy. I'll hop in this thing in a second. Once I make sure it's not gonna overheat and check everything out. Then maybe we'll pull it around front of the garage, try to put some air in that tire. See if we can run it up and down the road. I can't believe it's just sitting here purring. Do I, do I dare? All right, right to the floor. Give it a few pumps. All right, it's just go into the floor. We might not have any brakes, that's fine. We don't need those. I didn't even, didn't even check the reservoir at all. All right, that back one is low. The front's pretty decent. So we're probably leaking somewhere. I can't really tell because we're in the grass. We'll get this out of the grass and then see if we can figure it out. We won't have to worry about brakes with that flat tire. That'll stop us until we get it somewhere. All right. Well, Let's go ahead and get this unhooked and see if it'll stay running on the alternator. I think we're staying within a decent temp because that's not boiling yet and it would be if that was overheating. So let's get it disconnected, see if it's going to stay running. We'll just start with this. That's just amazing. 18 years. And it's just sitting here effortlessly idling away. That's, it's, that's just fantastic. All right, let's hop in this thing and see if it wants to move front to back. And if it does, we're going to go ahead and try to drive it around in front of the shop. I'm just going to get some stuff out of the way. We'll throw this air cleaner on before we actually shut the hood and try to drive it. I can't believe that tank's good too. Just clean enough that it's running fuel through it. All right, so let's push on the brake list pedal first. And then I think we need to go. telling what gear I'm in with this dang shifter. That one's still a forward gear. I think that's reverse. No. That's reverse. Okay, just had to figure out how this... Not the happy 
GPS going backwards, but transmission seems fine. Yeah, it breaks just straight to the floor. Yeah, it goes. It's the stopping that's the fun part. drove over here all under its own power and it does have a little bit of brakes just a hair let's go ahead and see if we can get air in this tire going for a ride in this thing and it runs so good and you can hear let's see if you can hear the turbo kick on if you got a little blow off noise this thing sounds fantastic back in brakes actually work they're a little rough and I feel like I got a warped rotor but they work good and it runs so good gotta get used to that I can't believe it okay went for a ride in this thing got it running and driving it's all good to go even the brakes work a little bit we're gonna come back probably in a week figure out what's wrong with the brakes on it, fix a fuel leak we found, and put a battery in it. For now, I'm gonna park it here, and I'm gonna throw a for sale sign in the window. Hopefully someone drives down the road and sees it. I think it looks pretty sitting there. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day.